Hello, welcome back to my channel, Penny Prepper. Today's video, we're gonna be discussing airways and airway management. Stay tuned. All right, as I just said, we're gonna be talking about airway management. Uh, basically, it really boils down to what we've always been talking about, the ABCs of first aid. That's airway, breathing, circulation. Uh, airway is the most important because you can give effective breaths, you can get air, uh, you can push air into the mouth, but without that airway, you're not gonna get air into the lungs, you're not gonna be able to get oxygenated blood flowing through the body. So really, it is the most important step. If you don't have a viable airway, maybe there is blood or phlegm or an obstruction in the airway. Uh, you pretty much are doing nothing to benefit that patient other than trying to clear that airway. All right, as I said, we're gonna be discussing airways. Really, the most important part about the airway is checking to see if there's an obstruction or maybe there is some sort of issue going on, whether it's blood, phlegm, whatever it may be. One of the quickest and easiest ways to discover this is, first of all, if the person is laying unconscious or they're not moving, the easiest way to do that is get some sort of a light and actually open their mouth. Typically, they're going to be, you know, positioned back a little bit. Their head's going to be touching the ground. Just take their jaw, gently pull down on the chin. And uh, unless their tongue is in the way, then hopefully you have some sort of uh, item that you're able to move their tongue out of the way that you can see. Uh, Typically, you don't want to put your fingers in the mouth. If somebody has just had a seizure or is actively having a seizure, you may, you may not be able to tell that. If you stick your finger in there and it's uh, time for them to seize, their teeth are gonna close down and your finger is gonna be pretty worse for wear. Uh, really, airway is one of the most important but easiest and most basic things that you can look for as far as trying to help somebody. Whenever somebody's choking, the airway is obstructed. Uh, that's something that if you know the Heimlich Maneuver, first of all, that is a great thing to learn for your kids. I can't tell you how many times I've seen parents panic. They're just so stricken with panic that they're unable to do anything for their child. They, they know the Heimlich Maneuver and it's pretty basic. You're literally just taking two hands and thrusting it into somebody but the sheer panic that comes over somebody realizing they only may have three minutes before they pass out and succumb to that blockage, really, I mean, it would scare anybody, especially if you're a parent or you've ever seen anybody or if you've ever been choking before, I can guarantee you, you understand that panic and seeing somebody else go through that is gonna make you panic as well. So really, if you don't already know how to do the Heimlich Maneuver, Go ahead and learn that it's very important but also if you know cpr that actually comes in handy if somebody is choking if they do pass out say you do try to do the heimlich maneuver maybe you don't do it effectively or know what you're doing when they pass out and they will pass out gently assist them to the ground <laughs> i've seen very many videos of this where people you know they start choking and they're going out and the person doesn't know what to do or they have them and they just let them drop because they don't know they don't they don't know what they're doing uh be ready for the drop it's gonna happen and it takes a lot less time than people think because the person's panicked using up that oxygen so as you're doing the heimlich maneuver as soon as you start to feel them start to go limp put your arms up under them guide them to the ground and then you actually start CPR. CPR will actually hopefully dislodge whatever item is in their throat. Um, and then after you dislodge the item, you can give the effective breaths, start the compressions. And I mean, of course, you're gonna continue that part, the chest compressions and the rescue breaths if they are not breathing anymore. However, if you dislodge the item and they gasp for air, don't hold them down and start doing compressions. Again, that's one of those things in the movies or you see people mistake on 
videos. It's kind of comical, but not really because you can do a lot of damage to somebody if you do CPR and they don't need it. Like I said, airways are simple. It's basically a tube, stuff goes in, stuff goes out. If there's an issue, you gotta fix it. Uh, also, there are things called oral airways, the hard piece of plastic that has a, it almost looks like a J, but it's made of plastic. Uh, I don't have one here with me that I can pull out. Uh, it's in my med kit, but I'm gonna try to throw up a picture in here. I don't know if it's gonna put it over here somewhere possibly. Um, also in my last video, the breathing uh, management video, I had a picture of myself with a nasal airway. I don't say the official term for them because I butcher it. Nasal pharyngeal. Not the best with it, but nasal airway, um, oral airway, it gets the job done. Basically what you're doing with an oral airway, uh, that basically, you know what? Don't worry about the oral airway or the nasal airway unless you've been trained. I shouldn't really be telling anybody how to do these because if you're watching this, you're probably not trained up to it. However, if you are trained, you know, basically you're measuring from the corner of the mouth to the ear, same with the nose. Um, also, you have to worry about the diameter and the size, but really what that's preventing maybe say somebody's having an allergic reaction if they have an airway and it is closing it's important to get that airway in as quick as possible in order to prevent that closing and then ha having them have no air supply at that point again this is medical knowledge it's not for you to use in practical use if you would like to learn how to use these things go out take a class learn how to officially do it you should not be trying to MacGyver anything. You shouldn't be get, trying to give people emergency tracheotomies. Yes, there is a good Samaritan law, but if you go ahead and cut somebody's neck open and shove a pen into it, uh, you're probably gonna get sued and you're gonna lose. So again, with all this stuff, it's good to know in case of an emergency where there's no other aid available. However, you could do a lot more harm than good by trying to do some of these things. All right, that's all I have for today's video. If there's anything you would like to see in the upcoming videos, please comment, share, let me know, and I will try to make a video on that specific topic. Stay safe, stay prepared.